Guapa, ¿cómo Thank está? You. Estoy muy bien. Muchísimas gracias por el tiempo. Thank you so much for the time. And I'm going to do this quickly because I feel that I'm going to turn into Chris Farley and just keep saying how awesome you guys are and not <laughs> ask you any questions. That's very so cool. Let, Thank you. Let me that get to great. it. Uh, I know. You could, I mean, but let, I have a job to do. So let's do it. Uh, Lin Manuel, you sort of, this captures a moment in time in your history of the show and you went off and had other creative endeavors, including having another crack at it in Puerto Rico. Uh, Do you feel that having that wealth of experience gave you a different perspective when you look at the movie that we're going to see on Disney Plus? Absolutely. I watch it with double vision. Uh, I watch it with a weird pair of prescription glasses on because I am watching the incredible work of this company and the ensemble, and I'm seeing details I could not possibly see from performing in the show. But I'm also remembering oh, in that part of Wait For It, I'm standing stage left and making Renee laugh because she has to turn and face uh, the house left. Um, in that moment in act two is my only chance where I get to catch up with David because it's our only offstage moment together uh, in Room Where It Happens, where we're fighting on stage and then we come off stage and go, oh, hey, what's going on with this? And what's, oh, okay, gotta go. Um, so I have this incredible double vision. And so when I watch the movie, I really just try to appreciate the things that don't concern me, the incredible ensemble work, the work that's happening on the second level, which I only get to visit once the whole show. Um, and uh, and it, 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 I'm incredibly grateful that it exists. All right, so thank you for that. Mr. Kale, let me ask you this. I'm endl endlessly fascinated by what you call cinematic capture of, this, of, the, of the play. How, what, and how much of did you know that you wanted to go in while you were shooting it? and how much of you discovered that while you were editing it in post-production? I wonder if that evolved um, in putting this together. It absolutely evolved. My thought and my game plan with Declan Quinn, my cinematographer, I think gave us a tremendous amount of coverage and options. And then when I got into the edit with Jonah Moran, our, our fearless editor, because it was a lot of footage, um, <laughs> it allowed our ideas to, um, to marinate a little bit and then to come back to it and watch again and realize, oh, being in that medium shot tells more story because we get to see the surround that Lynn was mentioning, or we get to see what the ensemble is doing there. You have to be very judicious with your close-ups when you know that going into a close-up or even a medium is gonna prevent you from seeing the other work on stage, the, the physical language created by Andy Blankenbuehler and the way that this ensemble participates in the storytelling is essential. So I wanted to make sure that that balance was there. So I think it also gives extra impact when you do go in and when you do actually get that kind of proximity. So I, I had an idea and then tried to have a better idea the next day. And can I just say, I, I'm gonna say some nice things about Tommy, which is very rare with him in the room. <laughs> I, I remember seeing his first cut in the fall of 2016. And then, you know, he had the luxury of, we financed it ourselves. So he edited over the course of three years and wow. those swings, of when we go, when we break the proscenium, when we go closer, I think got bolder um, over the course of that edit. I think the first edit was um, was amazing and and he just got bolder as he grew in confidence as, as a filmmaker. And um, it's, it's, not a, it's not a bird's eye view, it's a God's eye view because he's kind of everywhere you need him to be. So well, let and, me and ask what you. talking about is, is the fidelity, right? Like I wanted to honor what Lynn had made and our company had made. And so you want to capture and then you figure out where you can be more ambitious. Cool. Can't, cannot wait to see it. Let me ask you this, Lynn. What's the first thing that pops into your head in, about your Hamilton run here in Puerto Rico, which is where I got to see the show, which I'm eternally grateful for you doing that. So, gracias de nuevo. <laughs> gracias, gracias a ustedes. Uh, for me, the, it's honestly the moment when I step on stage uh, because in the movie, there's not a sound. Uh, it's just Alexander Hamilton in the silence. It's one of the moments we've gotten close up without an audience. And what I remember, what I will take with me forever is the ovations. We, I can't even talk about it without crying. Nieta. <laughs> I can't talk about it without crying. Um, the, the ovations we got in Puerto Rico in that moment, how improbable it was that we were even able to get the show there and raise the money we raised for arts groups in Puerto Rico and um, the way I was fed by the audience in that moment. And it got longer. Every, I thought it was just happened the first night and it got longer every night and I will carry that with me as long as I live. So, muchísimas gracias, my time's up. Eh, y lo último que te voy a decir es que yo también tengo un hijo Sebastián que está contando los días para poder ver esta oh, película. Oh, sí, ¿cuántos años eh, tiene? 
cumple 14 mañana y está oh. contando los días porque no me ha perdonado que no hubo taquillas para él en Puerto Rico. Así que muchísimas gracias. A, la, a las 3 de la mañana, entonces. Eso, eso es así. And thank you, Thomas, for talking about this. Thank you so much. You guys stay safe. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. You too, Pablo.